Hi there, this is Shruti and today I want to chat with you all about six reasons why your digital products aren't selling. Now, after having sold over $1 million of digital products in the last 3.5 years, I can tell you that I have tested out a lot of these theses and which is why I want to share with you the six most important reasons why your digital products are not doing well. Reason number one is that your product is a want and not a need. So when we are creating digital products or even physical products, we always want to be looking at, does someone really want this product? Is this product in demand? Is it solving a painful problem? The way to think about it is, are you selling a painkiller or are you selling a vitamin? Now, vitamins are nice to have and you know it would be great to have them, let's say on a weekly basis. However, when we talk about painkillers, they solve a specific problem and are in urgent need. This is why you want to be thinking about is your solution or product that you are creating a painkiller or a vitamin. Vitamins are good to have but they generally don't tend to sell as well as painkillers do. So whenever you're confused about creating a new product or you're trying to optimize the way your product is showing up, you want to think about how can I convey the value that this actually solves a specific pain point for my audience versus just being something that you know is exciting and that you may or may not want depending on your mood. So the more specific problem that your product solves, the higher sales you're going to make and the easier it is going to be for you to sell your product. The second most common reason I see why most digital product fails is because your copy is not compelling. Now copy in the marketing world simply refers to the messaging that you have when you are sharing your product. Now this could be your sales page, this could be your social media account, this could even be the email you send to make sales of your digital product. If your copy or your messaging for your product is not correct or it's not really targeting the right person, then you're going to have trouble making sales. Now, one way to look at it would be to just look at your sales page and see if you can clearly understand who is the person that this sales page is targeting. Vague copy such as, you know, this is for all entrepreneurs or this is for all fitness enthusiasts generally does not tend to convert that well. Whereas copy which is very, very specific and speaks to a specific type of person or audience with a specific type of problem, which is what we discussed in reason number one, tends to be the most effective at converting into sales. Now, when you are looking at improving and optimizing your copy, the biggest question you want to ask yourself is who is this product for and what problem is this product solving? What are the benefits of this product? What is someone going to walk away with when they use this product? And benefits do not equal features. So this is not going to be about how many pages your ebook has or how many lessons you have in your course. This is going to be about what is your customer or ideal audience going to walk away with as a result or solution once they have purchased your product. Is your product going to save them time? Is it going to save them money? These are all the things you need to think about when you're creating your marketing copy so that you are getting the right message across so that they can make the decision to actually make a purchase. If you have generic wake copy that doesn't speak to any specific benefits or any specific person, you are going to struggle to make sales. Now, two of my favorite tools to look at optimizing your copy include ChatGPT, which is a free tool. And even though it can not replace you know a conversion copywriter it can give you a lot of different ideas to reframe the wording on your copy now whether it is your sales page or it is your email or it is your social media caption you can put in that content inside of chat gpd and ask it to reframe it to make it more persuasive or make it more specific to a certain type of audience another tool that i also love and that has been around way longer than chat gpd is called copy.ai which is specifically created for copy and conversions so if if you go in there, you can select what it is that your goal is for your copy and you can optimize it accordingly as well. The next reason why your product might not be selling is because your product is priced wrong. Now, price is a factor of many, many, many things. And just a few things to consider when you are pricing your product include, you know, the niche that you're in. So for example, if you are in a finance niche or in business or entrepreneurship niche, generally speaking, you will be able to command a higher price than when you are in a hobby niche. Or for example, when you're selling something in gardening or crafts, this is just because of the average disposable income that is in each of these niches and also the types of advertisers and companies present in these niches. There are people who are willing to spend 
more to acquire a customer in this niche, which generally tends to inflate the prices of the products in these niches as well. So you want to be looking at who is it that you're targeting? What are you selling? And what would be the optimum price accordingly? The second thing to keep in mind would be your personal audience size. Needless to say, if you are a well-known or a more established entrepreneur, you are going to be able to command higher prices because you have built that respect, you have built that trust, and you have built that authority that commands a higher price. But if you're someone who is just starting out and you're posting your first, let's say, 10 pieces of content on social media, it's going to be harder for you to justify a very high price tag. So when you're pricing your product, you also want to look at the audience size that you have and how established you are in the eyes of your audience. The third factor that also goes into pricing is the platform where you're selling. So where are you selling your digital product? If you are selling your digital product on your own website, such as on your own, let's say, WordPress shop, or you have your own Shopify store, you are going to be able to charge a higher price than when you are selling on a marketplace platform like Etsy. The reason being when someone is on Etsy, your product is being compared to and ranked against thousands of other sellers as well. So your customer is sort of that bargain hunting customer who is looking for the cheapest and the best option possible. This can sometimes lead to a war to the bottom when it comes to prices specifically for digital products and can be not the best or most lucrative way of selling digital products online. Now, even though Etsy is a great tool for testing and can absolutely help you build a side income as well, when we're talking about higher prices and higher margins, they are definitely going to be when you own your own audience and when you have your own shop or you know store that is outside of a marketplace. So just to take an example, the same ebook that sells on Etsy for $5 can be sold for $30 or even $60 on your own platform, whether it is through your blog or through your YouTube channel or through your social media, because of the fact that you own your audience, you have a direct connection with them and you're building your own brand. This is not going to be the case when you are just one amongst thousands of sellers because there is no brand connection that your audience has with you on Etsy, which is going to basically lead to lower prices and lower margins. So based on where you plan to actually sell your product, you're going to need a different pricing strategy. If you are selling on Etsy, you're going to look at what is the average price of the sellers in that market? What is the experience that you bring in? How is your product unique? And then price your product accordingly. When it comes to selling on your own website or in your own brand, you can do the same math there as well. However, you have more flexibility in terms of what is the highest amount that you can charge. Because like I said, when you're building your own brand, you are going to be able to command a higher price than when you are selling on a marketplace. So keep these three factors in mind when you're pricing your product and really look at how you can optimize your price in order to ensure the best results. The next reason why your product is likely not selling is because you do not know how to drive traffic. Now, traffic is the lifeblood of any online business. I have said this a hundred times here on this channel. I say this all the time on my social media. I tell this to my email list. This is something that I have been saying since day one. And the reason why I know this to be true is because before I started selling digital products, I used to be a blogger and I relied heavily on advertisement and affiliate marketing income, which again is a function of traffic. If you don't have traffic, sadly, you don't have a business. And I'm going to break this down in just a second in terms of numbers. But first, let's talk about what are the different ways for us to actually generate traffic. The best but hardest way to generate traffic is through long form content. And this is content like this, me sitting down to record a video or even do a podcast or write a blog post. This is the OG way of driving traffic. But because it tends to take time to build this rapport and build this trust with algorithms, specifically search engines such as Google, it is not going to be the easiest or the fastest way to drive your traffic. Now, because I've been a blogger, you know, that's how I started out. It was really natural for me to continue blogging as a way to generate traffic and use also YouTube as well as my podcast to generate further different ways of, you know, getting eyeballs on my content. However, if that's not the case for you, you can look at a second way of generating traffic, which is relatively easier than long form content and is relatively quicker as well. And that's going to be short form content. Now, short form content has been made supremely popular with the likes of TikTok flooding the scene. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen a short video or a snippet that has come across in your TikTok or your Instagram or even your Facebook feed. And these short types of content are essentially what we call short form content. In this type of content, you generally have, you know, less than 60 seconds to capture your audience's attention, give them value, and then direct them over to, you know, whatever it is that you're selling or whatever it is that your offer is. And this is, you know, the content that is predominantly being shared on platforms 
platforms like Instagram, YouTube Shorts, as well as TikTok, and can be something that you can get started with way easier and start getting results sooner as well. The third type of traffic that a lot of people generally don't want to jump in right into because of the fact that it requires money is going to be paid advertising. You've probably come across, you know, advertising from your favorite brands or things that you follow on the internet just because of cookies and tracking and all of that. And you've seen that when you click on it, you are led to a specific offer. And when you make a purchase, the brand makes money. So this is again, classic 101 paid advertising. This method tends to be the fastest way to get traffic because you are paying for it. However, it is something that does require a little bit of experience and tuning and testing. So I wouldn't recommend this for absolute beginners who are just getting started. Now, again, this method tends to be the easiest way to get traffic because it is something that you completely control. You don't have to rely on the Instagram algorithm or the YouTube algorithm showing your content in order to make money. Now that we've gone through three types of traffic methods, you know, and mechanisms, let's talk a little bit about why this is even relevant for you. So one thing to keep in mind is that when you're selling any type of product, right, in any industry, whether it is digital or physical, there's something called conversion rate. This means that there is a certain percentage of people who are going to buy your product based on how many people saw your product offer. So let's say 100 people are saying your sales page. If five people buy your product, that's going to be a 5% conversion rate. Now, usually when you're starting out as an average marketer and someone who has average skills in this industry, you're probably not going to see a very high conversion rate. So let's take an average of about 1% for your first digital product. This means that in order to make one sale per day, you need to have 100 people who are visiting your sales page, not visiting your website, not visiting a YouTube channel, but actually visiting your sales page where you have the offer in place. So this means if you have a thousand page views, you're going to be getting 10 sales a day. And if you have 10,000 visitors on your page every single day, you're probably going to be making 100 sales a day. So knowing this, what we can do is we can actually reverse engineer how much traffic you will need to meet your income goal with your digital product. So let's say your goal is $3,000 and the product you want to sell is about $30. This means you are going to need about 100 sales in a single month in order to make $3,000. And when you divide 100 by 30, you will get something like 3.3, which means you need to make a minimum of three sales a day in order to actually make the target of $3,000 a month. And how many page views do you need to make for three sales a day? Assuming that the conversion rate is 1% is going to be at least 300 page views. So this means that if you don't have 300 visitors coming to your sales page, you are probably not going to meet your target. Once you really figure out what exactly you need to hit every single day, you will get so much clarity on where you stand in your business. The reason why you're probably not seeing the results that you want is not just because you know you have a crappy product or any of the other reasons that I shared in this video, but it's probably because you simply haven't learned how to drive traffic. So if you can fix your traffic problem, rest assured, you can also fix your sales problem because it's not just enough for us to have an audience size on social media or you know to have an audience size on our blog. We also need to see how many people are actually having eyeballs on our product. So how many people every single day are looking at your product sales page and then see how many we can convert off of that. One of the ways in which you can also increase your sales is going to be to improve your conversion rate and then you will require fewer people to make the same amount of sales. But that is going to be a step you can only do once you have already learned how to drive traffic in the first place. Now on my YouTube channel, I have tons of videos on how I do this with Pinterest. I also have courses that are specifically helpful for traffic generation and sales, which you can check out in the description box below if you're looking for more in-depth help on this aspect. Moving on, let's talk about reason number five, which is that your visuals are just crappy. When we are selling a digital product, we are selling something which doesn't have tangible value. I cannot just order this, you know, pair of shoes to my house, try them out and then send them back like I do with Amazon. That's not really something that is doable with digital products. So the only way that someone is going to be able to understand what value you provide besides the copy that you created and the words you use to describe the product is the visuals that you have on your sales page. Now, whether you sell on Etsy or Shopify is going to be irrelevant here because great visuals are super duper important in conveying the right image for your brand and your product. If I'm someone who's going to invest 
$30 in a template pack, let's say you're selling, you know, social media templates, I want to be able to see what exactly these templates look like. And I ideally want them to be in a mock-up or in a format that is easy for me to understand what I will get from it. One of the things that I do when I'm selling a digital product, and I highly recommend everyone do it, is to create a video that really walks people through what your digital product is about. This could be something as simple as you literally opening your desktop and recording your screen using an application application like Loom and sharing with people what are all the different pages inside of your digital product. This could even be something as simple as just recording on your mobile phone when you are scrolling through the templates or the ebook or anything else that you are offering. The idea here is that you are sharing a glimpse of what your digital product is all about with your audience and building that trust so that they're able to take the next step of buying with you. Because like I said, since digital products are not tangible and usually they're non-refundable, people want to make sure that they are investing in the right product. So if you can make your visuals easy, clean, and really effective in conveying the story of what your product is going to do, then you're going to be able to make more sales. One of the easiest ways to figure out, you know, what are the best visuals or how do you usually create the best visuals is going to be to just go and study bestsellers in your niche. If you are on Etsy, there's going to be lots of products which are going to have a bestseller badge. Look out for these products, see how the seller is creating these mockups, and try to see if you can create something similar to that. You can use Canva and the ready-made templates inside Canva, or you can buy mock-up templates, you know, also on Etsy or from a seller that you admire and use those templates in order to up-level your visual game. Okay, moving on to a reason number six. And this is, I believe, one of the most important reasons that I think a lot of people just miss out on. And this is going to be that you lack credibility. Now, this reason is way more important if you're selling on your own brand or your own store versus on Etsy, because like I said, on Etsy, people are usually looking for, you know, a bargain deal. So they care less about your credibility. But when you are creating and selling a product specifically on your own brand or your own website, a lot of people are going to be looking at signals to see whether you are really who you say you are and whether your product is going to add value or not. Now, some of the signals which are most commonly used, and you must have done that yourself as well when purchasing product is going to be social proof which basically boils down to testimonials and reviews has anyone else bought your product? Does anyone else have anything to say about your product? Are there any results you can showcase of people who have used your product? Now, it doesn't really matter if this is, you know, a friend or a customer. You can ask people to give you reviews after they purchase your product and choose to share the best reviews with your audience. But what's important here is that the more reviews that you have and the more reviews that you create, the more trust your brand is going to build and the more credibility your brand is going to build, which in turn is going to lead to more sales. Now, just think about it this way. When you go on Amazon and let's say you're looking for a cover for your Kindle, you're probably going to rank different sellers or different options based on the reviews that they have. So if someone has a really high review, let's say out of five, they have 4.5 or 4.6. And then there's another seller who has 3.8 or 3.5. You're more likely to go for the 4.6 rather than the 3.5, even if it is a higher price, even if it is a longer shipping time. And that is a sign of credibility. That's because we as humans inherently trust products more that have been reviewed and that have been shown to give the desired effect of, you know, whatever it is that it promises by other people as well. So we don't want to be the first person who is ever buying something because in the world of, you know, online marketing and digital products, there are people who sell crappy products. There are people who scam others, right? Unfortunately, that's going to be the case with any industry in the world and the online business world is no different. Another way to establish trust besides social proof is going to be your own personal personal story and your expertise, if it has been showcased anywhere, such as in press or in media, that can be a huge signal that you are really who you say you are. Because chances are, you know, a huge media publication is not going to put their name next to someone who is running a scam or is running a non-legit platform or shop. So you want to make sure that if you have any of these places where you've been featured, or if you've really worked with any industry leaders, so let's say in your corporate life, you worked with industry leaders 
and you can showcase those you know names as well within your website within your sales copy to encourage people to trust you more and to really showcase your credibility now this doesn't have to be you know always in terms of being featured in Forbes or in Business Insider it can even be something that you know you were showcased in different let's say software tools or you have partnered with different people who have authority in the industry so anyone who has authority you can use their testimonials proof and really show reviews from your customers in order to build trust and credibility with your audience because that is going to be the missing factor and is usually the missing factor for why someone isn't buying from you so if you can convey that and share that with your audience you're definitely going to be getting more sales in the long run so just to recap i'm going to walk you through the six steps that you can take in order to make more sales number one is going to be to make sure that your product is solving a need and not just a want and that you're communicating what need it is solving number two is going to make sure that you have compelling copy that targets the right person and speaks to them in the right way number three is going to make sure that you are priced effectively and correctly for wherever it is that you are selling your product number four is to work out what traffic you need to meet your income goals and then figure out how you're going to drive that traffic number five is going to be to invest in mock-ups and videos that showcase exactly what your product is about and improve your visual aesthetic for your digital product on your sales page and last but not least you want to be working on making sure that you come across as a credible and trustworthy brand so that your customers can place their trust in you and reward you with more sales so that brings us to the end if you found this helpful make sure to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and also follow the podcast if you are you know listening to the audio version thank you so much for being here make sure to share this with your friends or anyone else who might benefit from this and i'll see you in the next one